We interrupt your regularly scheduled scrolling to bring you an emergency broadcast of the Vantage Report. We've seen a 400% swing in the Central Okanagan's key real estate indicator, and this is playing out in real time as we speak. Now this video is gonna be a big information download, but if you stay till the end, I'm gonna give you the three things that you need to know in order to come out of this market on top. So what's this indicator that's swung by 400%? Well, it is the absorption rate or months of inventory. And we have seen this jump from two months of inventory to north of eight months of inventory in the last couple of months. That's a 400% increase in the absorption rate. And this trend has been playing out sequentially since February as we've gone from two months of supply to four months of supply to six months of supply to eight months of supply. We are now officially in a buyer's market. We've moved through balanced. We are in a buyer's market as of today. This is a big deal for the Kelowna real estate market. So now is this due to an oversupply of listings or is this due to a lack of demand in sales? Well, let's examine. So we've currently got about 2,500 listings. Is that a lot? Well, it's double what we had this time last year, but it's actually 20% below what we had in 2020. So it's at a, on a five year average level, the amount of listings that we have is not a super high amount. However, on the sales side, we've been chugging along below 400 sales now for two months. And in July, we did only 305 sales. There hasn't been a month this slow since the 90s. So what that means is we're roughly half the amount of sales we usually have this time of the year. And we've got double the amount of listings that we had this time last year. So double the listings, half the sales, that equals a 400% change in the absorption rate. And it is having its effect in the negotiations. We're seeing days on market going up, which creates more and more desperation in the sellers. And as a consequence, we've seen the list to sell ratio, meaning what people are paying for homes, go from 100% to 99% to 98%. And now we're at 97.7%, so a 2.3% discount. Now the benchmark home, which is a composite of all the properties that are selling, has dropped from 906,000 at the peak in March to 826,000 now in July. That's a about an eight and a half, nine percent change in the benchmark price. Now on the single family side, the average home at the peak was $1.16 million. And now after about a 9% slide, we see ourselves at a million and 60,000 for the average single family home. So that's about a hundred thousand dollar difference, a pretty big change. Now condos have not seen the same amount of uh, drop because buyers are being compressed into the lower price points, which is putting a little bit more buoyancy in the condos and the townhomes and the very entry level type product. Now apartments and townhomes have actually only fallen by 6% with the average going from 560,000 to 522,000. And as I said, this is because buyers have been compressed into the lower price points. And so you've definitely seen the higher price stuff take a larger hit than the lower price stuff. So why is this all happening? Well, simply put, it's interest rates. And this is truly by design. The Bank of Canada is trying to slow the market down because it's been on a runaway trajectory for the last couple of years. And so it's having its effect because of affordability. Now, if you compare what it would have cost if you had financed a single family home at the peak of the market in May for 1.16, you would be getting a mortgage at roughly 3.25% interest and your payment would be about 4,500 a month. Now fast forward to today, that property has come down by $100,000, but your mortgage rate is gonna be 5.25%, so a 200 basis point swing, and your payment as a consequence is over 5,000. So the difference is about $500, and that is a big chunk of the affordability. And it gets worse yet because even though prices have come down, what people qualify for has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk because of the stress test. So many people no longer qualify for a single family home and markets work in sequential order. The bottom end or the entry level of the single family home market needs to sell in order to unlock those folks to be able to go and buy that mid range or executive level home and so on. So when the market, when the bottom end of the market gets tight due to affordability, it has a massive knock on effect and we're seeing that play out right now. 
Now all of this actually spells opportunity for buyers who are not at the top, top end of what they can afford at a mortgage level because they're not competing with as many buyers. They're not competing with investors because that's out of fashion at the moment. They really have a clear shot to negotiate with sellers who are a lot more realistic about what they're willing to take for their home and they're able to get home inspections, they're able to get financing clauses and all the things that you're used to in a buyer's market. So it's actually an opportune time for some buyers depending on their time horizon, as long as they're willing to do the uncommon thing, they can get a great deal on a property and they have, like I say, four times the amount of properties to choose from just because of that change in supply and demand. It's actually really interesting, the sentiment right now, it's, it's been a big shift in attitude. If you go back six months ago, the buyers were acting very desperate, throwing themselves at sellers, you know, writing letters, pick me, pick me, and sellers were playing it really cool, actually a little coy, yeah, maybe I'll wait, and they had this belief that waiting was gonna obviously be a financial benefit to them as the prices were going up and up and up. Well, now it's the flip side. Sellers are starting to act a little bit desperate, offering incentives and different things like that, and buyers are a little bit too cool for school, going, eh, you know what, maybe I'll wait. I actually think that if I, if I hang back, there's gonna be a financial benefit to me for doing that. And a lot of buyers are taking this wait, wait and see approach. And so what we're doing is we're consulting them and asking the question, do you believe that we are on the precipice of a total complete meltdown, a collapse of the real estate market, or are we seeing a healthy long overdue correction in prices that will play out over the next 12 to 18 months? Now, most people believe the latter. What a correction looks like is usually anywhere from 10 to 20% softening from peak pricing. Well, here's the good news. We've already seen 10%. And so if you're of the mindset that it could be the worst case scenario, and for context, back in the global financial crisis of 2008, the prices came down by 20%. So that was the drop. When we had the huge foreclosure crisis and we had the global financial system completely melt down, we saw a 20% drop. So let's just go crazy and say it's that bad, which I don't know that it will be, but if it's that bad, we're halfway there already. And so if you believe that's gonna happen, then rather than wait, why don't we just go and try and price that level of risk or that margin of safety into the home that you wanna buy. There's lots of sellers with that level of motivation. We can find them and we can make offers five to 10% back of list price and wait and be patient and get a great deal. Why not? You've got all the selection. Now, if you're already in the market, remember it's all relative. If you've got a great negotiator on your side, you maybe have to take a small haircut on your home, but then you're gonna go and give somebody a major haircut on theirs and you're gonna pick up the difference in the exchange. So this market going down can really work well for you, particularly if you sell first and buy second. Now, a little bit more insight into whether or not we're looking at a, a correction or a collapse. Well, let's look at three things that stand out to me that point towards more of a soft landing correction versus a, a wholesale meltdown. Number one, Kelowna is very much on the map. In fact, the Western investor called us the number one real estate investment in Canada right now, which means that many people looking for safe harbor for their capital are going to invest in Kelowna real estate. Number two is the, the total housing starts or the new supply that's coming online is actually way down and well below what's needed to support the amount of people moving to the region. Housing starts are down 40% year over year and this is gonna have a big impact. And the main reason for this is the input or the replacement cost of this real estate has gone so high with increased material costs, increased labor costs, you actually can't build it for anywhere close to where the resale market is at or where people the, where the affordability is at. And so many projects are just not going to get built and this is gonna keep some much needed supply out of the market, which is very different than what we saw back in 2008 and 2009. And the third piece of the puzzle is everybody has been stress tested already. And people who have mortgages, we're very unlikely to see a, a massive foreclosure crisis, et cetera, because most people have so much equity from when they bought three, four years ago that they could just sell if they found themselves underwater on the payments and they'd still have lots of equity. Certainly not as much as they thought they had at the peak, but by no means underwater. And secondly, everybody who got a mortgage had a significant amount down and has been stress tested to a full 200 basis points more than what they were paying, which means their income could support the increase that we've actually gone through. And so you don't have the same predatory lending that we had in 2006 and seven 
with the zero down 40 year amortization. Anybody who could fog a mirror gets a mortgage. We're not, we haven't been doing that for the last five years. So I don't see a big foreclosure crisis on the horizon. So for those three reasons, we've got lots of people moving to the region, not enough homes being built, and very unlikely scenario where we see a bunch of foreclosures. I do not believe we're in for a big collapse. Now I promised you three ways to make sure that you make the right moves in this market. So number one, this is really important. You must sell first, buy second. And when a, when a market's going down and time's not your friend, you wanna make sure you sell at the highest point of the market that you can get. And then as time goes on, the 60, 90, 120 days that it takes to sell the property, find the next one and close on it, that property has probably gotten less in price. So you're gonna pick up the difference in the arbitrage. You're not gonna put yourself in a bad spot of having to pay too much for the home that you're looking for and take too little because you've got a 30 day shot clock to sell it. And so you've, you've got time to properly market your home, get top dollar, and then you can go out and act as a cash buyer. So that's super key. Number two, this is a move up market. And I explained this before, the properties at $500,000, $600,000, $700,000, are not getting beaten up nearly as bad as the properties at 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. All of those homes are way more affected by the interest rates than the lower price stuff. So if you're able to get to that price point, these properties up here are on sale. Your properties may have come down six or 7%, but there's probably a 10 to 15% discount that you can get on the properties in the price range mentioned before. And number three, make sure you've got a long time horizon. If you're just looking at buying and selling again in the next year, 18 months, you probably should sit on the sidelines and continue renting. If you've got a longer time horizon, now is a great time to buy, price some risk into the property. And if you do go through a period of time where it comes down five or 10% and you're going to be in the home for five, six, seven years, it doesn't matter. Secure a nice property, get your family situated, start adding value, and when you wake up five, 10 years from now, this will be a distant memory. So there you have it, folks, my take on what's going on in the market. If you uh, agree with me, give us a thumbs up. If you disagree with me, give us a thumbs down, but at least leave a comment in the comments below and tell me why you disagree. I'd love to engage in a healthy debate with you guys. And as always, I do these videos to be your eyes and ears to the marketplace. If you are looking at what uh, properties are available with 400% more supply, you can start that process right here on the blog. And if you're interested to know what your home could sell for today before things get any worse, now's a great time to start that process. You can get a home valuation started right here on the blog as well. Thanks so much for watching guys and uh, to your success, I'm out.